Hello guys, welcome to 3ds Max News. This is the first 3ds Max News for the year 2022 and it's January and we have a lot, a lot of news. So let's start by the new plugins related to 3ds Max. We have i2 software that announced Forest Pack 7.3. It's the most popular scatter tool in 3ds Max and some of the new features are the ability to allocate geometry to reference objects based on their names, improve support for scattering and randomizing groups, support for scattering volumetrics like V-ray volumetric grids and phonic emitters and other things that you can find on the description below. Also, they released Rail Clone 5. Rail Clone as well, it's an advanced and procedural parametric tool in 3ds Max, very well known, and there is a lot of new additions like the possibility to scatter not only geometry, but any non-geometry objects like lights and VDBs. There is a new cache system to bake a rail clone object and to be able to reuse in other scenes, making loading and saving way more faster. There is a possibility to have banking controls along the splines. You have now markers and you are able to define the banking control over different parts of the spline. A lot of other improvements are added on this powerhouse tool. Check the details on the links always below on the comment section. AccuMeasure 2.5 has been released, adding new features for simulating fire and smoke in 3D Max. The simulation tool supports CUDA GPU acceleration and also has new and simplified node-based UI. Chaos Group announced a simplification on license for Phoenix. Until now, you need a different version if you wanted to use Phoenix for 3ds Max or for Maya. But now, with only one unique license, you will be able to use Phoenix on both softwares. As well, Chaos Group announced a collaboration with Winter and Company to add 1,300 new luxury materials for packaging to Chaos Scans. These are high quality materials that are all scanned to uh, recreate the roughness, albedo and normal maps. And the first free plugin of the month is an update from a plugin that we saw last month, last year, a study Vida leads giving for free Clip Planes 2.0. This tool allows to cut or slice with the typical slice modifier in 3ds Max, but offers a much more artistic approach. On this new version, you can cut through different objects will filter all objects that are not meshes and has different assigned shortcuts. For example, you can invert the cutting plane, you can snap to cut to specific angles and change these angles, or you can offset the position on the screen space of your cutting plane. You can do all this in a very easy way and as you can see, can be very helpful for fast modeling approaches. Another free plugin is QOI Bitmap Format Plugin, and this is adding support to the quite okay iMatch format. It's abbreviated QOI, and I didn't know it before, but it's an open source lossless bitmap format that offers improved encoding and decoding speeds compared to PNGs, but with a similar size. And another free plugin, a lot of free plugins on January, it's called IFC Max Importer, and it's from Joseph Wynn Reuter, I hope that I say it correctly, and allow you to import IFC file formats into 3ds Max, supports 3ds Max from 2015 to 2022. Polyverse is a very interesting plugin that is able to render any scene wireframe to SVG format, so you can import these vectors on any other application. Currently has a cheaper price of $9 because it's still being developed, and yeah, I didn't know any other exporter for SVG files in 3ds Max, so I think that can be very interesting. Crea3D released a tool to be able to modify materials of selected objects to create a snow effect. This tool costs $25 and as you can see, can change some of the textures and it can add a boom map. And it can add a boom map to different objects based on the normals. If you don't want to define the textures, but you want to do a snow effects in 3D, Sergei Movshan created a very nice setup using Typeflow that costs $10. And as you can see, it creates a snow accumulation and ice cycles using VDB under the hood and can be animated and it's totally procedural. Pretty cool tool. Let's see some of the new scripts for 3ds Max. If you need arrows, Joker Martini have you covered. 
This script has a lot of ready-to-go arrows that you can customize, it costs $4 and is compatible with 3ds Max 2016 and above. Rolling Ball is a script to automatically rotate a ball in any direction using any surface and in a accurate manner. Created by Leandro Salerno, this script costs only $1. If you need to create a lot of roads, Road Offsetter can be very helpful for you. This script is free and basically it's creating offset for splines. You can define number of lanes, lane width, if you want yellow lines on the extremes, and other things. From Bosch Tech Cada, we have Mesh Muscle Script. It's a very interesting for animators and it's a mesh based solution and can work with modifiers. This is a free script and it's similar to the CAD modifier, but this one is an object modifier, so really useful, I think. If you want to learn 3ds Max, remember ArtStation Learning is now free. Check on the links below, I will have a link that goes directly to the 3ds Max section and you will see that we have a lot of free quality 3ds Max tutorials covering all types of work from modeling, rigging, texturing or animation, check it out because there is a lot of interesting things. We have as well 3ds Max tutorial.com that if you didn't show it before, check it out because Chang So Eun is updating it and this site focuses only on gathering quality 3ds Max related tutorials and you can filter them by categories so you can see a lot of cool tutorials uh, using 3ds Max for whatever section that you are looking to study. Also, from Chang So Eun, he created two tutorials focused on the new tools in Max 2022.3 that allows environment variable controls and token supports in different INI files in 3ds Max, allowing to define, for example, what plugins to open and more. Sure, it's a way more technical tutorial, but if you need to run 3ds Max on a bigger pipeline, this can be extremely helpful, and I didn't so discover it anywhere else, so really interesting. And let's start with our preferred category that is Max is only for Archbeef, where we see things that are not done. Where we saw different things in 3ds Max that are not Archbeef projects. Uh, let's start by Howie Day that created this amazing animation entirely done in 3ds Max. The base animation is done by the artist Colin Turner and Travis Baldry has uh, created the voice acting. Rendered in 3ds Max 2022.3, it's using V-Ray Next 5.2 GPU and it takes around 5 minutes per frame using an RTX 3090. ILM did another amazing making of of their work on the series Loki. ILM, as you know, used 3ds Max for all the scene environments and on this particular making of you can see a lot of great uh, scene environments and all this has been done in 3ds Max. You already know that ILM means the same as great quality. And a new trailer for the movie Moonfall is here. It's a Roland Emmerich film and this means that the world is ending one more time. A scanline VFX work on multiple shots for this film and I was involved in multiple destruction shots actually. Some of them you can see it on this trailer like the destruction of the city and different uh, breaking of things, I break a lot of things normally and I use 3ds Max for all my tasks here and it's the first time that I use heavily Typeflow on any project at a scanline and yeah, you can see it on different shots here has been quite great. And talking about Typeflow, if you are one of my Patreons, you will see that I have been adding more and more exclusive tutorials only for my Patreons using 3ds Max and Typeflow. So if you want to learn more Typeflow or 3ds Max, consider being of one of my Patreons. I think that I will be focusing this year to add more and more content that is exclusively for my Patreons. So you will see that I have already six, seven great tutorials, I think, covering Typeflow there. Then, from Patrick Urbaniak, that is also a teammate uh, here at the Scanline BFX, we have this amazing recreation of Wesley family on Harry Potter. You can actually buy the full project, full of details. It's a full environment that is 500 by 500 meters with the building in the middle. It's all done with 3 ds Max with heavy use of Forest Pack and Redshift for render. He created a lot of models exclusively for this project, like the house, the car as well. And there are some details that you can see. All this together renders in only 20 minutes using a GTX 2060. Anastasia Osishina is a 3D environment artist that created this surreal world called Life on Water. 
It's done using as reference his own concept art. All assets are modeled in 3ds Max with ZBrush and Substance 3D Designer. It's using Unreal Engine 4 using RTX for the final render. Luke Penry created this very funny animation using 3ds Max and Typeflow. It has very fun sound effects. I please check it out with the sounds. I will have the links below so you can check it out. He recorded himself uh, for the sounds. And yeah, it showcased that one very simple idea can look so, so good and so funny. And something that we don't usually see. Andre Holmeister released 5,000 generative art monkers NFTs. I don't know if you are on the NFT craziness, but yeah, 5,000 of random generated, all of them created with 3ds Max and ZBrush, the texture is painted in Procreate in 3D, and all the look depth was made in 3ds Max, and the generator was done with MaxScript to be able to run all these 5,000 variations of the, of the NFTs, and all is rendered using Arnold Renderer. We are seeing more and more people getting used to Arnold, I think it's great. And we will finish this section with another great game done by Shirsad Bahrami. He already created another uh, video game that works inside 3ds Max. This time he recreates the Flappy Bird. Now it's called Flappy Teapot because there is a teapot, obviously. It's 3ds Max. And all is done using Max Script. So you can play directly in 3ds Max while you are waiting for a render to be finished. You can challenge yourself, check the, the point score that you have and submit the point score. Uh, super funny to see these projects in 3ds Max. And that's all for this month, guys. What a January! Normally, January is quite a slow month, but we cover a lot of things, a lot of news regarding 3ds Max, and I hope that we will see a lot of new things on 2022. So please remember to subscribe to this channel if you are not yet subscribed, share it with your friends, give it a like, give a comment, I love comments. And thank you a lot to all my Patreons, helps me a lot to do these videos, as well if you are one of my Patreons, as said, you will get exclusive content in form of tutorials and scene files that I hope that you like a lot, and you can ask me whatever you want that I cover. Thank you a lot guys, see you soon, bye!